Hello everyone, welcome to this video. Today I'd like to show you the outline of the static and spherically symmetric solution of Einstein's equation, which is also known as the Schwarzschild solution. This will not be a rigorous derivation of the Schwarzschild solution, it will just be a silly trick. It will only show you the outline of the Schwarzschild solution of Einstein's equation. So the Einstein's equation is given by g mu nu, which is the Einstein's tensor, equal to 8 pi g times t mu nu. Now of course t mu nu here is the stress energy momentum tensor which is also the source of the gravitational field. And g mu nu here is the Einstein tensor. It says a second ring tensor, as demonstrated by the two indices here. And it can be written in terms of the Ricci tensor and curvature scalar. The formula for Einstein tensor is as follows. So g mu nu equal to r mu nu, where r mu nu is the re t tensor, minus half g mu nu times the curvature scalar. Now, if I want to take the Schwarzschild solution, it has some characteristic that must be fulfilled. Number one, it has to be static in time. So it's an object with a spherically symmetric body that does not rotate and therefore the metric is supposed to be static in time. So that would mean the solution of the Einstein equation, which is a metric, the metric components will not depend on time. Number two, the solution has to be spherically symmetric. Now, one of the meaning of a spherically symmetric metric is that it contains all the properties, all the symmetries of a two-sphere. That means somewhere in the metric, the metric imposed on the two-sphere, which is d, let's say, sigma squared, equal to d theta squared plus sine theta squared d phi squared. This angular form of the metric of a unit two sphere will have to be unaltered. By the way, the meaning of a static metric is not only just that the metric coefficients do not contain time, but also it means there cannot be any cross term. That means no term like dr dt. Now in fact we can assume that there is a cross term in the metric, but as we will see later that by a simple coordinate transformation it is possible for us, for a static spherical symmetric metric, to get rid of this term. And that's exactly what we choose to do. Number three, obviously, the signature of the metric is not allowed to be altered. So signature remains unaltered. And of course, we will choose to have the simplest form the metric can take. There will be other conditions that will impose. One important property that must be mentioned is that as we go toward infinity, so as r goes to infinity, the metric should be reduced to the Minkowski metric, which is minus dt squared plus dr squared plus r squared d omega squared, or in this case, 
we have written it by the symbol d sigma squared. We will also use the condition that for weak gravity, the potential of a spherical symmetric body will be reduced to that of the Newtonian potential. So for the weak gravity, we get the Newtonian potential. Now, equipped with these conditions, we move forward. Now, the next part is about simplification. We're going to simplify the field equations that governs the static solution, which is also spherically symmetric, and the answers for metric itself. Now, let us first look at the field equation. The field equation is g mu nu equal to 8 pi g t mu nu, where d is the Newtonian constant, t is the stress energy momentum tensor, which is also the source of gravity. So this is the source as well. Now we'd like to find the solution in regions where the source is absent. That means there is no matter in the region that we are eager to find a solution. So no source means c mu nu equal to zero. So therefore our field equation reduces to g mu nu equal to zero, which is also r mu nu minus half g mu nu into r. Now what we can do is in fact contract this with the inverse metric tensor, like that, in both of the indices, and then we get half g mu nu and then g mu nu are equal to zero. Once we have that, then this is obviously the definition of the curvature scalar. Then we get R here. But here we have a contraction between the metric tensor and the inverse metric tensor. Now recall that G mu sigma and then G G sigma nu equal to delta mu nu. And if you take delta mu mu, that is of course equal to 4 in 4 dimension. So therefore, this is equal to 4. So finally we get r minus 2r equal to 0, and therefore r equal to 0. This gives us a reduced field equation, which is r mu nu equal to zero. And that will be our simplified field equation for this case. Now, let us try to simplify the metric tensor. So at first we'll take the most general form, and then we'll discuss how to reduce it to a nicer and the simplest possible form. First of all, recall that the Minkowski metric written in the spherical polar coordinate takes the form minus dt squared plus dr squared plus r squared d sigma squared. d sigma squared is equal to d theta squared plus sine squared theta d phi squared. So our answer needs to be such that it respects the spherical symmetry and all the conditions we have mentioned previously. So what we can do is to take a metric in this form, ds squared equals minus a squared dt squared minus 2ab dt dr c squared dr squared plus f squared r squared d sigma squared. Now that is our answer, right? This one. But we can carry out a coordinate transformation via which we can eliminate this term. So this is the term we want to eliminate. What is the required coordinate transformation? 
that does it for us. So let us take t to be replaced by t prime here and here. Now it's just a simple coordinate renaming that does not change any physical content of the metric tensor. Once we have that, and we also know that a is a function of r, b is a function of r, c is a function of r, and f is also a function of r, and that is to respect the spherical symmetry. The coordinate transformation we are looking for is the following. These coefficients, they're square, are supposed to positive. So the required coordinate is something like this. e to the power phi, which is also a function of r, times dt equals a dt prime plus b d r. Now if we do that, then squaring it makes things even more interesting, which is e to the power 2 phi dt squared gives us a squared dt prime squared plus 2ab dt prime dr plus b squared dr squared. Now if we plug that in, then we get ds squared equal to minus a to the power 2 phi dt squared plus b squared dr squared plus c squared dr squared and then plus f squared r squared d sigma squared. Now again, we can rename the functions. So let us just do that. What we can do is to define that b squared plus c squared equals a to the power 2 lambda and f squared is defined as a to the 2 gamma and both lambda and gamma are functions of r. So finally, our metric tensor takes this form. Now, this is not the simplest form yet. We can simplify it even more. So how do we do it? Let us define a coordinate r bar. And this should be equal to a to the power gamma times r. Now, if we take the differential, then this is pretty much straightforward. This is simply uh, dr e to the power gamma into 1 plus r d gamma dr. Now, if we substitute this into a metric tensor, it becomes d s squared equal to, and now we can redefine our coordinate as follows. Use this definition where r bar is defined as the new r coordinate, and this factor in front of dr bar squared as a new factor e to the power 2 beta, then of course we arrive at the simplest form for our answers, which doesn't lose the generality, yet respects the static spherical symmetry. Now all is left is to plug this answers into the Einstein's equation, which is r mu nu equal to zero, and voila, we are done. And to solve and then we'll see the result or the solution will give us the Schwarzschild solution, which is the Schwarzschild metric. So we don't have to go through all the elements. We know that this is a symmetric metric. So if we plug in our answers for the metric into the reduced field equation, we get these equations as a resultant ones or at least the necessary ones. Now, the first two equations seem to be very similar, at least in terms of the content inside the square bracket, except for the last terms here and here, and the third equation will prove to be necessary later. So first, what we'd like to do is to Notice that these equations are individually zero, and therefore we plug in the first two equations into one equation. 
So if we do this, where e to the power 2 beta minus phi rt t plus rr r equal to 0, then that would in turn give us phi comma r plus beta comma r equal to 0. And if you solve this, you get phi a equals minus beta plus some constant c. Now, this constant can be absorbed into the time coordinate by making the transformation t tends to e to the power minus c times t, where this is just a constant factor. So therefore, we can conclude that phi equals minus b. So that's the fantastic part of the result. Let's plug in this result as the equation for the component of r theta theta. What we have left is that e to the power minus 2 beta r times beta comma r minus phi comma r minus 1 plus 1 equal to 0, just like we have had here. So therefore, this, when used here, reduces it to this. It's a simple equation. The derivative is equal to 1. And that, when solved, gives us e to the power 2 phi equal to 1 minus rs divided by r, where rs is an integral constant. So finally, we end up with the form ds squared is equal to minus 1 minus rs divided by r into dt squared plus 1 minus rs divided by r inverse then dr squared then r squared d sigma squared. Now we can see that in this metric there is just one parameter, one independent parameter which is this integration constant rs and if we take uh, in the weak gravity limit where we know that g t t becomes approximately minus 1 minus 2 phi where phi is the Newtonian potential, gravitational potential, then we notice that phi can be written as gm divided by r. So this allows us to identify that rs is equal to 2gm. And that's it. If we substitute this value back into the metric, we finally end up with our desired short shield metric, which is written here. Now, this solution is unique, and this uniqueness is proven by a theorem called the Birkhoff theorem. And there are three points to prove that this metric is unique. One of the points is, of course, by directly substituting it into the Einstein's equation and see that this solution satisfies the Einstein equation. So substitute into Einstein equations. Number two, the spherical symmetric space-time can be foliated by two spheres, foliation by two spheres, which is why we can afford to keep this format here. And of course, most importantly, a metric, which is very symmetric and static, will always have this form, ds squared equal to d tau squared, which is a function of two coordinates a comma b, plus r squared, which is a function of the two coordinates a comma b, and sigma squared, which is a function of theta and phi. But of course, that is outside the scope of this video. I hope this helps you in some ways. Uh, of course, in future, I'll try to make a video where I explain the derivation of Schwarzschild solution in the most general detail. Until the next video, let us stop here. Thank you very much for listening.